Hi, welcome back to another episode of Art World Confessions. So recently, someone who follows me on Instagram sent me a DM to ask, when was the last time you posted about art? And within this very basic question was a lot of angst, a lot of condemnation, like where am I? What am I doing? Why am I not posting about art? Why am I posting about these other political issues? And I mean, I had to ask myself, why aren't I posting about art? Subsequent to that, I posted about the latest find in Indonesia of cave art that goes back about 50,000 years and that this is much older than any of the cave art found in Europe so far. And I posted that, well, here we go again, just working on decentering Europe in terms of Western art history, decentering a Western point of view about art history and sort of discrediting all of the emphasis that had been placed there over all these years of our art education. And of course, there was the Puck article by Marion Maniker, the art market bank run theory. Maybe I could have posted about that as well. The fact that so much art isn't selling right now, as a lot of it being the young artists that for so many years had been overpriced and now no one can move them. And that people who are trying to resell them are even being offered less prices than what's in the galleries. <laughs> I mean, it's just laughable, you know, the idea that people thought all of this stuff wasn't just art for enjoyment, but was an actual asset and investment. Or maybe I could have posted something about this Art News article, which says, a month from Art Basel, small and mid-sized galleries are adapting to a slowed down market. This one is by Deborah Lauter. And again, the article is really quite laughable because what we've seen, not just recently after Art Basel, but for the last year or so, is a general slowdown, even at the very top of the market. So here they talk about all the sales that they made, some sales were uneven, blah, 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 blah. But I've been hearing even from people at the very top that the market is soft. So it's not just affecting artists who are young and who are in the galleries and who have been overpriced for the last 10 years or however much, but also affecting high-end art, secondary market sales. Maybe I should have posted about that. All I know is that when I first was interested in art, writing about art, buying art, selling art, whatever it is I do from time to time, I got into it because I really enjoy working with artists. I really enjoy art in all forms and fashions. And the idea of the art market, the idea of people buying more paintings now because they seem to be more bankable than any other type of art. I mean, all of those conversations are for the lawyers, they're for the bankers, and they're not really for the artist or the real art people. That's why in the last few years, you've seen as well, so many hires from law firms, so many hires from banks. I mean, because art as an asset is no longer about art per se, it's about it being an asset. That's not the same thing as art at all. And to be honest, it gets quite boring. That's why those guys move from finance and law into art so that they could revive their souls from the boring stuff that they do in their offices, which allow them to then go spend some money and have some fun with the artists. I guess I could have posted that about art. Thanks for watching all of this. Thanks for liking, sharing, subscribing, hitting the bell notification so you know when I upload another episode of Art World Confessions. Have a great summer.